got on this project in 2012. And uh, he explained it to me, uh, what he did for the children, what he did for the veterans, and uh, impressed me. Uh, because I witnessed how these dogs have an impact upon veterans' lives and the children's lives with autism. And uh, it, it's something that can change a person's life completely, changes the entire family's life. The testimonials that I have heard from parents who have these dogs has really touched my heart. It gives them the opportunity to live more independently. Here's the story of Carson and Dixie. Carson's cute and cuddly guy. He's always been very happy, loves to giggle, loves to play, loves to wrestle. I could wrestle with that kid for hours and he just won't stop. Growing up, he was always very smiley, just loved people, he loved our dogs. I started noticing he wasn't playing with toys the same way that um, other kids did. That's kind of when we started noticing things were a little different with him. He also um, never had very good speech. So we were always curious about Carson, um, why he was a little bit um, slower as far as um, mobility, um, his speech, just not less, less, a little less coordinated than other kids. Um, so we decided to get him um, tested for uh, autism around three years old um, and they confirmed Carson has autism with speech apraxia and uh, sensory processing disorder. That's when it became more apparent, like we can't do the same things that um, other families can do because um, by that time, Carson was becoming more dangerous and running more often and um, his sense of danger never registered with him. He just would go. He likes to sensory seek anything he sees that interests him and he will bolt, run straight for it without seeking um, any other input of, a, of his surroundings. Um, meaning if there's a, a fancy transformer across the street of a highway, he's gonna bolt just for that transformer and not realize um, any other dangers in his vicinity. That's how it kind of was every time I went out in public. It was uh, humiliating. It's, it was just, you know, I just wanted to cry. And I just, I stopped going out because um, I, it was too hard for me and um, physically stressful and um, emotionally just draining. So I, um, I just ended up staying in the house and unless I um, could go somewhere enclosed, it, it just wasn't worth it anymore. Being able to connect with other moms of kids with autism has been um, really helpful for me. The Isaac Foundation provides a mom's night out once a month and Holly, the director of the Isaac Foundation, has been really helpful for us. While I was telling one of my, you know, many stories of Carson getting out, she actually mentioned to me, you know, we know this um, uh, foundation called Retrieving Freedom and they have service dogs for kids with autism. I was able to look up their website and uh, learn a lot of things. There are some videos of other parents talking, which I, um, I mean, I identified immediately with what this one mom was saying about her kid running away. And I was like, wow, that, that's me. I go, that has happened to me so many times. So I ended up calling um, and talking to Scott from Retrieving Freedom which was um, really helpful. The retrieving Freedom's process of training a dog to go with a family takes two years, from eight weeks all the way to 24 to 26 months old. At eight weeks old, our dogs get put into foster homes where they're raised and that family comes or that individual comes and helps us 
get the dog from eight weeks to 10 months old. They do puppy classes, foster training, and we help them prepare that dog for its really first stage of final training before it goes to the family or the home. So through this training process of taking a dog from eight weeks to 24 months, we have to really find the right dog in a selective process to figure out which dog matches which family. We had a, a dog named Dixie, and she was in her foster home at that time, which they usually spend from eight weeks to 10 months old, um, learning the basics. And looking at Dixie's disposition and what we needed out of a dog to work with Carson and the family, she looked like she was gonna be like the perfect match, but we still had to introduce Carson. We had to bring everything together so that we could make sure. And as we moved forward, it just became more clear and more clear as we went on that Dixie was the right dog for Carson. After we approved the Bogarts to get a dog, uh, then the training starts. So in the general training process, the first thing we started on with the Bogarts was the tethering. That was the thing that they needed the most. And it was amazing to watch Carson immediately work well with Dixie in training. So when we instantly put that tether on, he was ready, he grabbed his handle on Dixie, and off we went walking, and things were awesome. So it was very shortly after that we were going into public and working with them, and that all just, it couldn't have worked out better. Everywhere we go with Dixie, we have a sense, a peace of mind, that Carson is safe. We don't have to worry as much um, and watch Carson 100% of the time with Dixie. Granted, we're always there together with them, but Dixie keeps him safe and keeps Carson from bolting. Snuggling is a great thing to work on, and we worked on it with the Bogarts at the end of the day. So what, what better time to say, Carson, why don't you lay on the couch, and Dixie can, can hop up here and snuggle with you. So before when um, Carson gets a little anxious, he really craves some deep pressure and, you know, like snuggling from one of us. But when we got Dixie, she's able to snuggle with him. For him, that was really calming, and calming enough that it helps him fall asleep. Following the specific training with the family at the facility, we still had to get her placed in the school. So we take a trip, we go to the school, we meet the aides, we meet the teachers, and we meet the school superintendents and the principals who are all involved with this project. We started off working with Kelly, the teacher. And we worked one-on-one -on -one with Kelly of how you can use this dog in things that you're worried about or things that aren't going well in the classroom. So I specifically worked with Kelly on tethering. We walked down the sidewalk. We walked with Carson. We made sure that she understand how the system worked. But she actually had to pass the public test with Dixie as well, so she was ready to work with the dog in the school system. Dixie um, provides Carson with motivation to accomplish reading and writing, math, um, and during those um, educational experiences, Dixie is sitting right next to Carson, and when Carson gets something right, or is super excited, he gets to look at Dixie and give Dixie a high five. Uh, on the social bridging, sometimes it's just a matter of having the dog with them. That non-judgmental dog attracts attention from others. So Carson becomes cool now, because he, he's got a dog. Where before it was like, eh, I don't know if I want to talk to Carson or Carson might push me. Well, now he doesn't. He's got his handle, he's got his dog, and, and Carson's pretty cool, so let, let's go talk to Carson. While Autumn and I are busy, sometimes we lose track of Carson and can't find him. He could be anywhere, we don't really know. Um, so trying to find him is nerve-wracking, frustrating, scary. Seeking and finding a child. You know, this, this can be done in so many different fashions. So we can teach the dog, and Dixie does a great job of that, of hey, go find Carson. Uh, he might be hiding in a closet. He might be just downstairs playing. But it's still a job that we can use to keep Dixie and Carson connected so that Carson actually feels like Dixie's his dog. This dog has to have a purpose too of be working for this child. And the child has to feel that, you know, there's something this dog is doing for me. And it's kind of cool when they get to go into the other room and we say, hey, Dixie, go find Carson. He's like, oh, you found me. Since meeting the Bogarts for the first time, and then and reflecting back then and looking at things now, with Dixie in their lives and Carson being almost three years older now, since the very, very first time I met him, it's been amazing to watch this journey from my end. You know, it really has. It's not just mom and dad's nerves when they first came for the consultation. It's not just Carson 
bolting and not bolting now. It's watching all these guys come together and the, the Facebook posts and the constant daily reminders I get from this family and many others like them of how good and how well this is working. Providing these dogs for families to actually retrieve their freedom, uh, increase the independence in their lives, that's what we do. But, I mean, ultimately, I think that's why everybody wants to help. I think that's why Jenna jumps on board to be a, a, a trainer for our foster homes or a foster home family. I think that's why people jump on to donate. I think that's why teachers are so excited to be a part of this process because they know what they're going through on a daily basis with these kids in the classroom. And then you've got the neighbors to the family that say, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And we see you guys walking down the street now. And it's just, the spider web just keeps going. So, you know, we can't do it without all parts of the spider web. That, that's what Retrieving Freedom is all about. Carson's um, a super special boy to our family. Um, he means so much. Um, what would we do without him? I have no idea. He is our joy, um, our passion. Um, he's cute, cuddly. He's a pain in my ass, but he is just the, one of the best kids. And um, without retrieving freedom and Dixie, we'd be broken uh, without them.